Science at the Child Mind Institute is a remarkable enterprise. In just 10 short years, we've produced over 200 peer-reviewed journal articles. We have received over $30 million worth of federal funding for the research we do, and we have become the leader in neuroimaging in children's mental health worldwide. And we have shared over a billion dollars worth of data with scientists everywhere. When we asked the question of how effective are our tools for characterizing psychiatric illness, we realized that there's a lot of work to be done there. It's really building the collaborations, building a culture. It has to be impactful and it has to happen at a reasonable pace. Because at the end of the day, the individuals that suffer are those affected by mental health and learning disorders. The importance of finding a biomarker is that it is going to take the diagnosis of child mental health disorders to a new level. And that kind of test, whether it's going to be an EEG or a functional MRI, will give parents more confidence that the diagnosis is correct and make them more enthusiastic about getting treatment. But more importantly, it's also going to help us develop precision medicine. The Healthy Brain Network really is a culmination of a vision to create the landscape for biomarker discovery to help advance that effort. We don't want to look at just that one label or that one aspect. We want to look at the full picture for an individual and understand how to treat the larger picture. The Healthy Brain Network is collecting the most comprehensive set of data on the developing brain from kids five to 21. The Healthy Brain Network, because it is so ambitious, is creating what will be a unique resource in the scientific communities around the world for understanding connections between genetics, brain, and behavior in complex populations. This enterprise is going to be generating foundational, seminal science for years and years to come. We're focused on changing tomorrow and the way clinical practice is going to happen tomorrow, but we're also helping to deliver to them the best diagnostic consultations that we can provide today. Open science, it's essentially an approach to science that uh, emphasizes transparency and emphasizes the sharing of information. It's not just about collaboration, it's really about thinking about the process on science as a transformative process. When we talk about open science, whether it be open data sharing, open access tools, or the culture that are embodied in these, what we're really talking about is how do we improve the efficiency and the quality and impact of research. Large data sets are really important to make discoveries. With the Child Mind Institute's enterprise of collecting data, thousands of kids' data sets are available to literally hundreds of thousands of scientists globally. That's what's going to accelerate the pace of discovery. It was very powerful for me as a researcher to realize that you could actually uh, bring together, integrate these data sets, and ask questions that are impossible to be answered with sample sizes that isolated laboratories do. And that opened my eyes, and it transformed me. I'm just constantly amazed at how the child mind is in this area, as well as in understanding the human brain, both basic and clinical science dimensions, is taking an international and important lead. For science to advance, you want to actually have multiple models and to advance science at, in multiple parallel lines, but also that intersects in ways that can ultimately improve both of them. The Child Mind Institute is an example about how private organizations can help us advance the science of um, medical conditions, in this case, psychiatric disorders and ultimately, not just the science, but how it affects how we practice and take care of patients. The vast majority of people in the world don't have access to mental health assessments, let alone care. So the future of psychiatry and care really is in the digital realm, where we can give people access to care wherever they may be. Part of the science at the Child Mind Institute is applied technology. By developing apps and devices, we're able to get the science out into the community, collect data, and simultaneously get more people involved in the research endeavor. The Matter Lab 
is dedicated to building wearable devices and smartphone and other technologies to be able to track and better treat children with mental health illnesses. One of the reasons why my own research group became so interested in developing this collaboration was because the innovations developed here allowed us to ask questions that we would never have been able to before. So whether that's mobile apps that can collect data from the comfort of a child's living room, to sophisticated software that's made freely available to researchers that facilitate in the sophisticated brain analyses that we have to do that's really accelerated the pace on research on human brain development. The technologies we're developing are ultimately intended to be able to improve the mental health care of individuals around the world. We're very proud of what has happened in the past 10 years, but we're incredibly optimistic of what's going to happen in the next 10 years. The model used by the Child Mind Institute in which they planned science and practice is a very unique one because it, it facilitates the translation of knowledge that you gain from science into the clinic. And so in a way, you actually have science being alive. When I think about the Child Mind Institute, it's really a home of scientific innovation in providing a template for how science should be done in terms of data sharing and open science. It's really turned the dial in how people think about the research that they can do. I'm hopeful that the science we're doing at the Child Mind Institute is gonna improve the lives of children who struggle with mental health or learning disorders. It's going to improve our diagnostic procedures. It's going to make treatment more effective. And the sooner we get a child into treatment when they have symptoms, the better the prognosis.